How's it going? I hope you come to worship God this morning. Here, I'll sing with that. <laughs> I hope you're here to worship God this morning. We are. I want you to have a good time in the Lord and expect great things. You read the end of the worship. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Look, somebody tell us it's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I want us to say to repeat this after me. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. Say it again. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one, except I worship on the Lord. All right, give Lord a hand clap of praise. All right, here we go. Y'all ready? Wait a minute, I'm getting a little happy here. There we go. Glory, glory. Ready? Go ahead. Take us out this morning.
time, if you have a special request you'd like to mention this morning, uh, how about a special request by uh, signifying a little bit of the The Hollister family. Not only is Mr. Hollister in the hospital with COVID, Mrs. Hollister has tested positive, and so has one of the uh, grandsons. Okay.
given. Okay, and when we're talking about Christmas, we're trying to stay in Revelation the the whole uh, time. Okay, the whole throughout the rest of the year. We're going to try to stay in Revelation throughout the rest of the year. And so it's going to be good, but we're uh, also going to do seven churches. But remember, we got back to basics too. So that first Sunday is going to be again back to basics, but it's going to be Christmas in heaven. So we're going to have a, a whole bunch of stuff going on. Get your Bible out. Stand for the reading of the word, Revelation chapter seven. Revelation chapter seven. You got your Bible? Say Amen. Amen. Chapter 7, verse 9. Amen. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne. And before the man clothed with white robes and palms in their hand, meaning they were, they were blessed, they were, they were clean, and they were rejoicing. Okay? And cry with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, and sit upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders, and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Such for your hands this way. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Lord, we can do nothing on our own, God. We've got to have you every step of the way. Lord, I ask you right now, Lord, to touch and anoint in a very powerful way. Minister to each and every one of us, God, in the way that you can. Lord, help us, God, to stand up. Lord, to show up and to show off for you, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for all the things you say, all the things you do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said... Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Look at somebody on the way down and say, the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. All right. All right. You can be seated. Let's see here. Okay. Praise God. I know people are still out having Thanksgiving with their family, and that's okay. We want them to have Thanksgiving with their family. We want them to enjoy themselves and, and uh, get a chance to, to, to fellowship with one another. Amen? So, uh, let me tell you this. Let me start with this. So, a man in Chicago calls his son in New York the day before Thanksgiving and says, I hate to ruin your day, but I have to tell you that your mother and I are divorcing. Forty-five years of misery is enough. Pop, what are you talking about? The son screams. We can't stand the sight of each other any longer, the father says. We're sick of each other, and I'm sick of talking about this, so you call your sister in Dallas and tell her. Frantic, the son calls his sister, who explodes on the phone. Like heck, they're divorcing, she shouts. I'll take care of this. So she calls Chicago immediately and screams at her father, you're not getting divorced. Don't do a single thing until I get there. I'm calling my brother back, and we'll both be there tomorrow. Until then, don't do a thing. Do you hear me? And hangs up. The old man hangs up his phone and turns to his wife and says, Okay, he says, they're coming for Thanksgiving and they're paying their own way. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Now we're going to continue with our, our, our uh, Revelation study. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna move around a little bit uh, over the next next uh, month because we want to do something other than just the seven churches. But we're gonna talk about a Thanksgiving that's out of this world, a Thanksgiving that is out of this world. Y'all say it with me: a Thanksgiving that is out of this world. You know, uh, a Thanksgiving has actually uh, deviated from what it used to be. Amen. I mean, in just my lifetime, I've seen such a big change from when I was little until now. Over the past couple of years, actually, if you want to know the truth about it, it used to be Thanksgiving was a great big holiday. It was wonderful. We celebrated all the time. There was stuff on television, all kinds of stuff. And now, you hear, okay, don't miss the after Thanksgiving Black Friday sale. All the, all of the, 
focus now is on Black Friday. It's not on Thursday. Life-giving Thursday is on Black Friday. You know, in 1789, George Washington had said, It is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor. Now, this is something that textbooks aren't going to tell you, and right now you're not going to hear this. That's the words of George Washington. Amen? But the focus has been reduced from thanking God to parades, sports, and the biggie, Black Friday. You know, used to, on holidays, you didn't have any stores open. And so you better get what you can get while they're getting as good. And I remember when I got up Thursday morning, I had a little thing in my text from, from uh, several stores saying, just in case you didn't get everything, come on and get what you need for your Thanksgiving lunch. And then it says, come after Thanksgiving and come and see some of our sales. Why? Nothing about thanking God. Nothing about we thank you, God, you took care of us. So, so again, parades, sports, Black Friday. But that's here on earth. In heaven, it's a different story. Amen? Things are so much different in heaven than they are here. That, let's just, let's just uh, read this again. After this I beheld a little great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood about the throne and the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. That's Revelation 7, 9 and 12. Now, I want us to think about, I want us to just stop for a minute. I'm going to talk about something now. We're talking about uh, thanksgiving in heaven. Worship is made up of two primary factors. It's made up of adoration to make big. And it's made up, or worship is made up of two primary factors. It's to... Adoration to make big and thanksgiving. And in order to have a true godly thanksgiving, we need four things. Number one, we need faith. We need faith knowing that he is able. We need vision, seeing what he has done, what he is doing, and what he will do. Gratitude or appreciation to God. And then a decision, I'm going to worship God even when I don't understand. Come on now. I'm going to worship God even when I don't understand. So now, so now watch this now. Again, we're talking about Thanksgiving uh, in heaven and Thanksgiving night in this world. The multitude or the redeemed of the angels uh, the, or the, for the four living creatures, they all join in adoration or worship. This worship and praise was sevenfold. Seven in the book of Revelation throughout the Bible, but especially in Revelation, carries some special power. Amen? So let's just, let's just look at this. Look, first, there is seven churches in Revelation. There are seven spirits. There are seven lampstands. There are seven stars. There are seven seals on the scroll. There are seven horns of the Lamb. There are seven eyes of the Lamb. There are seven angels, seven trumpets. Seven thunders, seven heads of the dragon, seven heads of the beast, seven golden bowls, seven kings. Seven, 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 seven. Satan's number is what? Six, six, six. No matter how hard he tries to be God, he always falls short. But God is seven, seven, seven. Why, why does God always why, why does he have seven, seven, seven? Well, seven is God's number. Why? Because it's the number of completion. It took him seven days to make the heavens and the earth. Six days on the seventh day he rested. There were seven feasts that pointed to Jesus Christ. So it's the number of completion. It's the number uh, of perfection. So whenever you see seven, think about this. This is God's number, the number of completion, the number of perfection. So when you see seven, something special is getting ready to happen. Now let's look at the first word before we see the seven uh, special uh, words here uh, in worship to the, to the Lord. The very first word is amen. Amen. Normally we say amen at the end of our prayer. 
don't we? But here, they say amen at the beginning. So this starts this sevenfold thanksgiving. Amen, along with hallelujah, is one of the most powerful words in any language there is. Amen is the most powerful word in any language. Watch this. When amen is given at the end of a statement, what it means is so be it. May it be fulfilled. When we get through praying, we say amen. We're saying so be it. May it be fulfilled. But when we say it at the beginning, we're saying listen up. Surely this is the truth. Think about it. What he says is, I want y'all to listen carefully. I want y'all to listen good because what y'all about to hear is very powerful and it is a very powerful truth. So now, here we go. Here it is, the, se the seven blessings of God. First there is, of course, praise or blessing. You see, God the giver deserves our adoration and praise. Why? We do not provide God does. Magnify Him. You know, I remember one time there was somebody in my family years, years, years ago. I uh, was talking about everything they had and what they had done and all the things they had were attaining and getting. And I looked over at that person and I said, no, God helped you do this. It's by the power of God. And the person told me, he looked me right dead and I said, no, God had nothing to do with this. I did it. I don't want to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I don't want to put in 50 hours and 60 hours a week. I'm the one who travels all over the place. I did it. God had nothing to do with it. And something happened on his job. I, I felt chills run down my spine. A couple of weeks later, maybe a month later, something happened in their job, and all of a sudden the insurance changed, and also the way they took out taxes changed. This person went from having everything he wanted to barely scraping it. And I watched him barely scrape it, for several months. He even cut me and said, look, I got a bill coming due and I really need to pay this. Can you help? And I actually want to tell him what happened. I thought you had everything made. You don't need God. You got everything you need. He said, but I didn't. And so the person said, can you help me pay this bill? I said, uh, yes, I will. And the person came to me and said, you know what? I really think I messed up a few weeks ago. I said, why'd you mess up? He said, because I said, God had nothing to do with my success. I did this. I pulled the hours. I did the work. It was my skill and my labor. I did this and said, now God has shown me, no, everything I got comes from him and everything I got will go back to him. And you know what? Once he said that, about a week later, he got a job offer making about three times what he was making. Why? He never had that problem again for as long as I knew him because he said, from that time on, I know, yes, I've got skill, and I know I've got talent, but it's God who gave me the skill and God who gave me the talent. God provides, not me. So here, 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 taste of the day. No matter what you see, no matter what you've got going on, don't ever forget, it's God that provides. Amen? We need to magnify Him. It's from Him. We sing it. All blessings flow. To Him, all blessings should flow, especially when we think about the blood of Jesus Christ. When Calvary, when Jesus Christ and His blood was shed, a fountain opened up of grace that we could not have had any other way. We are seated in the heavens by Christ. Go ahead. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Go ahead and praise Him. <laughs> praise Him. Come on, praise Him. Do better than that. God is our giver. God is our giver. He is our source. He is our supply. God is awesome. Yes. Can you imagine the thanksgiving that's going on in heaven right now? Then the next word, glory, was his doxa. Okay? That means, literally means an opinion or to estimate. Like a doxology at the end, we, 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 we've estimated everything that's going on, and at the end we praise God. Well, here it is. You take all things in consideration and you realize that you need to give God what he deserves. Give God all that belongs to him. Praise him for his magnificence. Praise him for his excellence. Praise him for his preeminence. Praise him for his dignity. Praise him for his grace. Glory be to God forever again. Go ahead and give him another hand clap of praise. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's right. That's right. Macy's has
had nothing to do with it. Get ready. The next word, wisdom. Sophia. Okay? God possesses all knowledge. He possesses all wisdom. And if you're a smart fellow today, guess what? It came from God. I have to step in here because I can see Eddie right now chomping at the mirror. Last week, did y'all smell something kind of different in here today? Okay, warn each other. Look, go look at anybody and go. This is a, an ionizer. It's an industrial strength ionizer. We use them in fountain to get some of the chemicals out of the air so we can breathe. I used this one for Bethany when she was sick and all that necrotic fluid was flowing in the house and smelled like death. I could put this in a room, went for 30 minutes, and it would be okay for several hours. And, and uh, But it says because it changes the oxygen, it, it, it changes the, 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 the uh, charge of the oxygen not to get in the room for 30 minutes after you run it. After everybody left out Sunday, I turned it on. Well, I was coming back in here to change my bass strings, and Eddie come with me, and I'm holding it up. I remember seeing me walking in, he said, something burning. I said, nothing's burning, Eddie. It's that ionizer. He says, worse than that, I showed it to him, and you can see the, the blue charge inside of it. The electrons come out, coming, or when it's doing the exchange of the oxygen, you can see it. I said, it's right here, Eddie, it's not a fire. And I looked in it, and breathed, without thinking. I said, look here, Eddie. So Eddie looks in it, and Eddie really gets a good whiff. And so I set it down, and so Eddie walks right here and goes, <laughs> and he gets right here and he goes, I said, Eddie, get from the edge there. What is wrong with you? He said, I was okay until I sniffed that. I went, oh, man, you weren't supposed to sniff that. And I was coming down to get him, and I forgot that I sniffed it too. <laughs> And when I stepped down, I went. <laughs> so I said, isn't this up two fairly intelligent adults? <laughs> Not acting so intelligent. Amen. <laughs> All the gifts. <laughs> so knowledge and wisdom is gifts or are gifts to man from God. No human understanding can stand against God's wisdom. Matter of fact, God just doesn't have all wisdom. He is wisdom. He is knowledge. Amen. Supreme intelligence and knowledge belongs only to God. And Romans 11, 33 says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are His judgments and unfathomable His ways. So again, let's go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on. He's got wisdom. He's got knowledge. Amen. Amen. And then honor. Time. Okay. Honor and time is to esteem over time. Esteem is respect given to the supreme God, maker of heaven and earth, the redeemer of your heart and life. Our Lord and our God paid the price to, for, to, for buying our redemption. He deserves all honor. I thank you, God. Come on. I thank you, God. I honor you, God. I thank you that you did what I could not do. You died in my place. Praise him. Come on, people. Praise him. He died in your place. Praise Him. He took the penalty of your sin. Praise Him. Praise Him. Come on. Praise Him. God is awesome. Yes. He is not a king, but the sovereign eternal ruler of all that exists. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. All praise, glory, wisdom, honor, and power be to our God. I'm almost through. Power. Dunamis. Now, some people talk about dunamis as dynamite. That's making it very minor. Because dynamite, once you light the fuse, what happens? It goes off and it's it. The proper word for dunamis would be dynamo. Dynamo, the more it turns, the more power it generates. And the more power it generates. How those guys back in the day with those field radios, they would, they would wind it up. Back in the early telephones, they would wind it up. The dynamo it would charge the phone. Even now, they got flashlights and radios that you can do it right now in case of an emergency. You've always got power. That's what it's talking about. The more power is generated by God, the more power exists. So let's think about something. A small part. Y'all say small part. A small part of God's inherent strength has been revealed to you in creation. Wow. 
just a small part of his power looking at the seven days of creation. But also it's still a small part of God's strength in Christ and in the cross. You see, his power has been revealed over sin and death at the tomb. His triumphal power has been revealed in the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. His inherent and dwelling power has been revealed in your life through the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine to have that kind of power? That You know, Superman. How many have ever read Superman? Do you know that some of these uh, characters actually have a biblical base to it? You know that Superman is symbolic also of God, of Jesus coming to the earth from another earth, from another planet, and coming here, and he cannot be destroyed in this planet. And the way he keeps his strength is to keep looking at the sun, to get out in the sun. And so uh, it's a very, very powerful, powerful thing. So, but can you imagine all the power Superman has is nothing compared. And that's just fiction to what Jesus Christ has, which is not fiction. The next word, strength or might. God has an un unwavering ability. Well, get back up there. God, get back up. Come on, here we go. One more time. There we are. God has an unwavering ability to exercise his power. His spirit who is within us, God's might, the power of the church, sovereign over all that he has made, is solid and inexhaustible. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his strength and his might. We are not strong because of the things we have or what, or what we have done, but because of God in whom we have believed. You see, we got a little out of order. You missed one. Actually, I didn't. I say the best for last. Do you know the word for thanks is grounded in the grace of God that brings forgiveness, reconciliation, exceeding great joy? Some powerful, powerful stuff. Right now, there's a multitude in heaven singing and thanking and praising God for his strength and his power to save. Wow. It never stops. 24-7, God is being praised. We should be praising God all the time and thanking him what he does. And I should be thanking him all the time for what he does. Just imagine, once we get to God, some amazing, amazing things. Amen? So now, okay, what's going on here? <laughs> Let's just go ahead and move on to the next one. we still got some power. I don't know what's going on, but it's going on. Amen. The greatest form of praise that you could ever have. Well, thank you. The greatest form of praise that you could ever have. Hebrews 13, 15. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of our lips that will confess his name. Now watch this. What he's saying is even if I don't feel like it, I need to praise him. Why? Because he still deserves it. He still desires it. And he still dwells in it. Wow. Praise him and thank him. Praise him and thank him. And I'm getting ready to close. BJ, get ready to do something. You're going to play some of my boots. <laughs> Bring your thanks and praise to God. Because he deserves it. Macy's didn't do it. A.M.P. didn't do it. Wynn thinks he didn't do it. The Pilgrims. Close to 160 something people on the Mayflower. It was 100 foot long, 30 foot wide. They didn't even stay on deck. They didn't have nice cabins. There was a storage compartment that was five foot high where they stored a sailboat. And all the pilgrims was in that five foot section. Five foot tall. And they were there for 66 days. 
they had a companionship, but the companionship kept leaking, so they had to leave the companionship, and they all gathered on the Mayflower. They ran out of fresh food within the, within the first week, and so they were eating hard tack bread, which is something that you honestly could use for skeet shooting. So they tack bread. By the time they got to the shores of America, the average man had lost 25% of his body weight in 66 days. After they got to America, almost half died that first year. It got so bad that the ration For what the people had was five kernels of corn a day. Five kernels of corn a day. I mean, you can still eat over the land, but five kernels of corn a day. And God sent what they considered an enemy, the Indians, to help them survive. And now they've been there.
be discouraged if somebody in normal sees not a hair. And also, don't be discouraged if things don't always seem quite the same during December. Because remember, there's so much Christmas stuff going on. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them God is good. God is good. God is great. God is great. And Lord, we appreciate it. Lord, we appreciate you. Brother. Amen. God is awesome. Amen. Brother, let's put some prayer for this.